I'll ask the first question. Yeah, I'll let them do it. Uh, the, 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 you're familiar with the Regional Occupation Program, which is a state-funded program. And, and the Sweetwater Union High School is saying that they're not getting enough money from the state. And, and I've seen it change lives. I don't have to tell you how good that program is. And it's adult education also. What is, is the priority that you're going to set for education for adults? And these are desperately poor people that are taking, I mean, they're trying to improve the lives for their children. What priority does adult <coughs> education have in, in the scheme of things? I mean, would you put it above, say, uh, the uh, high-speed rail? Or would you put it below? What, I mean, what are you going to say? Are you going to say something uh, that is multi-billion dollars, and this is a very, very small amount of money. It's an unbelievably small amount, less than $3 million, just for Sweetwater, which is the largest school district. You know, I, I want to hear what your priorities yes. are. Yes. That, that's my question. You might as well first. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, well, thanks again for having us. Um, my name is not Lorena Gonzalez. I'm Evan <laughs> McLaughlin. I'm Lorena's campaign manager. Um, and it's a really good question, sir, and one that's really important to Lorena. Um, you know, Lorena, when it comes to education policy, one of the biggest things that she's really concerned about is career and technical education. Um, and she has a history of working on that. Um, you know, as uh, you know, she is uh, the head of the San Diego Labor Council. Um, one of the programs we have at the San Diego Labor Council is a youth build program. And what the youth build does is uh, very similar to the ROP program that you're familiar with. Uh, we go and do outreach in the community um, in areas of uh, zip codes that have um, high unemployment, high dropout rates, and we've been able to not just recruit people to come and learn a skill, specifically, um, you know, a construction skill, uh, welding, um, we did a partnership with NASCO, but now because of a um, project labor agreement in the San Diego School District, we are able to f feed these people who now have their GEDs into an apprenticeship program, right? And so the apprenticeship program is actually one of the biggest beneficiaries of GOP, of the ROP um, uh, programs that you see, that you're talking about at Sweetwater. One of the problems we have in our state's education policy is that there is too much focus on every kid needs to go to college. Every kid should go to college. And I think Lorena is very clear about that. Every kid that has the means and the will to go to college. But we have extremely high drop dropout rates, especially in some of the neighborhoods that we're talking about here in the 80th Assembly District. And if there is a career ladder, and one of the things Lorena has done over the last um, decade in this, in this uh, community is to promote a career ladder, it doesn't necessarily have to involve college, right? You know, the question is, you know, not only should we find out why people are going to college, but when they go to college, they shouldn't just have to work at a kiosk, a cell phone kiosk at the mall, right? That ends up becoming possibly a dead end job. Instead, we have we do have real opportunities at middle class careers in the you know the construction industry. I'll give you an example. For every three journey level construction workers that are um, retiring from a construction <laughs> trade, we are only able to find one apprentice to fill that spot. So we've had a situation in San Diego County where at the height of the building boom, we had about 90,000 construction workers. Today, it's closer to 40,000 construction workers in the county. Right When things were really bad, it was less than 30,000. But what we see is that this crisis in retention in a middle class career right, is being masked by just the economic downturn. Now, when we get back up and we're all running on all full cylinders again and we have the opportunity to hire up to 90,000, why, why do we have to go look at Arizona to find these people? We have the, the, you know, we have the manpower here, the woman power here, people that if we can get them into programs and we can incentivize them into programs through things like the ROP, right, we can then put these people onto a, um, a track for a middle class career. And that's really one of the things that Lorena's worked on. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I couldn't agree more in terms of the top level of priority on those kinds of programs. You know, my father, uh, when he graduated, he was a he was a meat cutter um, in, in a in a labor union uh, for uh, most most of his adult life, 
And when uh, you know that business started going down, they they bought him out. And he retired, and, and you know he was still a fairly young man. And and you know I mean, his retirement wasn't that great, so he wanted to supplement his in income. So he went to uh, Grossmont College and went to ROP, and he learned how to fix washing machines and and dryers and televisions and air conditioners and all kinds of stuff. And he. He made a little bit of money on the side fixing all of our family's stuff. You know, most of the time we do it for free. But it was something that not only helped him financially uh, and able to do that, and, and the courses were very, very um, reasonable in terms of the cost, but it was, not, it was something that helped him sort of enter into retirement. You know, a time where he wasn't getting up every morning and going to work and spending his day and transitioning into a situation where you know, he, he actually had something to do was constructive other than just sit around and watch TV or maybe take a walk or something like that. So that was very important for us personally. I think it's important also for people today more than ever. Uh, I've been walking and talking like I know Loren and her campaign have to a lot of people. And just the other day I was in Rancho Del Rey and I stopped at uh, some folks' house. Uh, their, the family's name was Coda and I knocked on the door and Mr. Coda answered the door. And we started to talk, and he told me about the fact that he is a veteran. He's a he's a reservist. Uh, he had just come back from uh, Afghanistan about a year and a half ago, um, and he couldn't find a job. Uh, you know, he had a high school uh, diploma, and, and uh, you know, again, veteran coming back, couldn't find a job, um, and so he had to take a job as a um, a bouncer in a bar, right? Because that's the only job he could find. And um, so he has trouble getting courses at community college and he's got the GI Bill and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, he, um, he was talking about the fact that it's just really tough. Even if you have the education, there are jobs. And I appreciate the apprenticeship programs and everything, but just like everybody can't be in college, not everybody can be in a labor union. I mean, the labor unions, IBEW and others, turn away more people than they actually accept. And we need jobs for everybody in this, in, in this state, and, and particularly in South County. And so when you think about people like Mr. Coda, he can't, you know, he's still struggling to find a job. Luckily, you know, for him, I think he's got a pretty good shot because the county is starting to hire sheriffs again, and he's well, apparently well-suited or well-experienced, according to him. Uh, to be in law enforcement and I wished him well and he said his wife had to work nights and his kids are one's in a senior in high school the other ones uh, you know first year in community college they can't find jobs these are the people that we've got to help education is a major part portion of that helping people move through the ladder and I agree with Evan but we've got to improve our economy we right now the biggest problem is and it was just an article in the LA Times yesterday about you know, yes, the state's unemployment rate is improving, but the fact of the matter is, is that kids that get out of college can't find jobs. They're one of the highest, uh, you know, the unemployed. And we've got to fix our economy. So we've got to have a strong education system that provides services throughout the people's lifespan, but also we have to have a strong economy for those people that are trained, whether they're in a labor union or not, have good jobs to, to go to.